Uh, hello and welcome. Second pod in two days. That must mean that it is rugby week in the Six Nations. Um, and we're here for the Kingham Coffee Scottish Rugby Roundup. Or in this case, it's a bit of late for a roundup. We, we weren't here last week because yeah. um, it is the f- has been the final week last week. Um, but we'll touch quickly upon the Wales game, I think. And then we're going to be looking forward to the next Grand Slam challenge, which is France. Who, who, who could have believed that I a few know. weeks ago? Absolutely mouth-watering. And I think it's hard to emphasise, and I think a lot of pundits have been talking about this over the last couple of weeks, the Six Nations is awesome. Like, so good. as a competition, the quality of the rugby, in particular, the France game last weekend, um, and then obviously Scotland's second half performance against Wales, the quality of the rugby you see in the Six Nations is fantastic, and it's just a great competition to watch. That Ireland-France game, and rightly so, is being heralded as one of the you know most high-class, best games ever, which uh, is yeah. incredible. I, I, I saw Big Jim the day after the game. And I was like, oh, France looked quite ropey. And he was like, nah, he's watched it back. And it's, it, they were very, very good. Yeah. For some reason, in my first watch, I thought, you know, DuPont especially, at times looked like he he didn't know which direction to go. And he, he was looking for runners. He, he, he was having to throw real flat passes just to crash. I think that, more than France looking shaken, was an example of how good the Irish rush defence has been. And... Uh, they had literally no room. No. I, I just, I, part of this, and obviously we're previewing France uh, this week as well, and we'll obviously talk about the Wales game. You cannot stop looking at Ireland. I'm mm. like, to put away that France team in the way they did, that was a very tight game. But for me, the last 20 minutes of it, when uh, Sexton went off and Carberry come, it was it Carberry comes on? No, Ross yeah. Byrne. Uh, yeah, Ross Byrne comes on. Just controlled the game. Yeah. And I just find that absolutely incredible. So, um, obviously, we've got this weekend against France to look forward to. I can't wait to see how we go against Ireland. Like obviously, they're in our World Cup group as well. So. But that depth to have um, Byrne coming off uh, off the bench in place yeah. of Sexton is all the form you see from, like, a Leinster, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, currently, Leinster can still put 50 points on a on a team of the weekend with the majority of their first players away, which yeah. is mind-blowing. It is incredible. Um, it is Edinburgh get 50-plus points on that. Which is, is no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thankfully, so Glasgow looking a bit more optimistic. Oh, for sure. Um, well, should we do... Let's quickly go through. So, the Wales game. Yeah. Um, final score was Scotland 35 Wales 7 and obviously it wasn't looking that way pre-half time sort of in the closing stages yeah. of that first half and again I think a lot's been talked about that Scotland could have maybe gone in behind if um, what's his face that found his hands I always forget his name Rio Dyer oh hi, Rio Dyer is it Rio, Rio Dyer yeah yeah My I, name ridiculous is drop. Rio yeah ridiculous he similar to absolute. Stuart Hoggs back in against Ireland a couple of years ago um, try line beckoning so the first half I think Wales fronted up second yeah. half Scotland so quality came to the front. we were both at the game and to me where I was sitting I was extremely nervous but it felt like Wales were winning almost but they no, weren't no. and I think that kind of just goes a little bit to show the the confidence slash expectations we currently have about the Scotland team. Yeah. Like, um, they felt like th- they were losing, but they were actually winning. And I suppose um, that's great. But, uh, you know, it's that winning mentality they now have where they can close out games even if they play rubbish. Or, which yeah. is exciting for this weekend because they, they definitely, they put 35 points on Wales and they didn't look fantastic, I would say. Oh, I completely agree. And again, I'd say against England, we didn't play to our best either. So I think the Scotland squad still needs to try and click in mm-hmm. to fourth or fifth gear. That being said, France and Ireland are the two toughest tests. So yeah. they have to play at their best to beat France and Ireland. But again, what leads that is the Finn Russell magic, obviously. And um, you know a, a lot's being said about his assist for uh, that try just after half time, which which was incredible. I, watching that live, I was like, "What an idiot for not getting that that try away!" Yeah, uh, and you see the replay; and you're like, oh, it was unbelievable. It was absolutely dreamy. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there's not many people in the world who can even attempt something like that. 
But I think we've Sonny Bill was obviously absolutely laughing it off. It's a, it was a very much Sonny Bill S, but we've kind of come to expect that from Finn. So mm. again, I don't think you know I, you're not surprised. It's almost where as Scotland fans have been spoiled by the quality of Finn. He almost yeah. expected every game. So he obviously absolutely <laughs> turned up for that second half, bossed the game. I think the back line, which performed so well against England the week before. Performed very, very well again. Yeah. Um, especially in that second half. So Hogg goes off early, early doors down. and you're left with, yet again, world class 23. Yeah. Uh, Kinghorn. It's absolutely been carving up, to be fair. Yeah. You've got a good stat, have you? Is this now the time uh, to release that? Not for this. <laughs> you want to hold on to it? Not a Kinghorn related stat, but. but the tri assists was. Oh, the Kinghorn tri assists. I mean, yeah, it's unbelievable. Sorry, I'll, I'll find that stat. Um, basically, Blair, Blair Kinghorn's. In top tier rugby, third in try assists over the last 12 months. So, number one, I need to try and find where the stat was. Number one is uh, Finn Russell. Um, so, this is tier one player since 2022, try assists. Finn Russell with 10. Willie R- LaRue, South Africa, of eight. Blair Kinghorn, seven. And obviously, he and had. The next is. Five with uh, Intermac. Uh, Intermac. But obviously, Blair Kinghorn, some of that is as a 10, whilst he was mm-hmm. playing, obviously, when Finn was out of the team during the Autumn Nations. It, it is a good stat. Maybe you're right. Maybe he's a world class <laughs> 23. But it's I do not think a bad position to be in going into a World Cup to have someone of that caliber who can come off the bench and you know, do damage. It, it's, yeah, 100%. I, I think covering a hog or a Russell, two key players. It's like, but I think what we are seeing is he is a 15. I yeah. think when he came on for Hog last week, He's played superb when he came over, came on again the week before against England. Mm-hmm. He was very, very good. Yeah. So I d- don't think we should continue to experiment at all with him yeah. being a 10. No, I, um, I just think let's get players playing in the positions they are best at. Um, obviously, interesting looking at these stats again, that uh, in terms of break assists, which obviously is line breaks uh, and then assisting after that, Finn Russell again. Uh, number one in the last 12 months for line breakers. Scotland is just so good. Uh, Scotland. Sure, Hogg's number four. Finn right? Russell, very, very good. So, uh, how do we build on the momentum? And I guess the hope is building, as always. <laughs> I know. And maybe rightly so. First time we've won two games back to back since 1996, opening two games. So, um, how do we continue this momentum into France away? What do you think? What does Scotland need to do to beat France? Uh, Start to France. Obviously, we beat them last time, but I think just composure. I'm like they they can't rely on these moments of genius from from Finn. I might like, we have to get the basics absolutely nailed before we can, you know, reward ourselves with that kind of stuff. And um, you know, going to Start of France certainly in like the first twenty minutes is going to be absolutely nuts. Yeah, we the place in. is going to be incredible. Um, so I think it has to be a case of like, as Ander, if he's picked, keeping it, keeping control keeping of his head on. emotions. And yeah, you know, th- there's a lot that needs to go right. I think for it to to play into our favor. But it's the old adage of, of France, like if it go if it starts going uh, against them, you got a sense of that in in, our, in our, against Ireland, like things weren't coming off, and there yeah. were moments where you know they were. They, they looked average at times, very, very few times. But I think there's there's an opportunity there. Fr- France will not like to lose two on the trot, um, no. especially with the World Cup coming around. They are probably were fully expecting to be going into this game two for two, um, which, as we know, we know Ireland well. They're obviously not going to uh, give up easy. But uh, I think... Yeah, what needs to go right? I think the forwards have to show up, and I think we need to just be composed and not rush anything, and let's just you know take the opportunities when they present themselves, which we have which been we doing. have done. So I think that was another stat we were talking about before that Scotland um, are top for points taken per mm-hmm. visit to the opposition twenty 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 two in the during the Six Nations. So twenty twenty three, twenty twenty three, but against England and Wales, we have been the top team for getting points. So it's actually averaging at f- above four points per visit to the 22. It's mind-blowing. The 22. <laughs> um, so I do think that's a very, very good very good start. We need to keep that going. Those are the kind of stats that if your defence is good, which is going to need to be against France, you can build off of that. 
and you know every time you get to the twenty two. <laughs> The twenty-two. Every time you get to the twenty-three, <laughs> you <laughs> you uh, you can build off it. Yeah. I, for me, all sorts of defense, and then the you figures uh, everything else out. A lot it. has gone right um, in terms of you know uh, line outs, scrums. Like we've been pretty good. There's not been a lot of forced errors, and I think um, we need the first few of each of those things to be. Just safe and comfortable. Yeah. Um, I don't really like. They were going quite full hog, like going thrown to the back of lineouts and stuff against okay. Wales, which it was great to see. But I also think, you know, it's a real confidence shaker if you try and do that and there's a, a counter attack that puts you back into your own half. And, you know, I think Definitely. we need to just try and oh, not get too, too overconfident. That being said, it is almost like our. our our secret weapon, isn't it? The kind of ridiculously chaotic um, plays which we've kind of been accustomed to with with Townsend and with Finn coming back in. I, um, and I agree with that, but I think Finn's been very controlled over the last yeah. two games. I, I think we've not been that chaotic at all. The question is now, when we get put under pressure and... So we've controlled, to a certain extent, large parts of the England and Wales games. If we don't control large parts of the France game, do we start pushing stuff to try and find those tries? I genuinely think there's enough confidence and belief in the squad now that they will hopefully just play their game. Mm -hmm. And like you said the other week um, against England, if you're in it with 10 minutes to go, I think the Scotland team are very confident they can win games now. Um, so in the, I, I don't know the stats on this, but it feels like in the last two games we've scored... Maybe last five minutes, or certainly last week. Uh, last week it was the last two minutes or something. Yeah. Um, which were clearly very fit. Yeah. Not running out of steam. Still inspired to push, even though we're thirty points up. It's you know, it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm yeah, buzzed. Absolutely pumped. Um, obviously there was tickets available. <laughs> we did not. We did not stick up our hands. Um, Aaron wasn't massively oh, fond of that. I, I, I'm not even married. I'd be divorced. <laughs> um, but I think again, so many positives out of the first two games to bring. I, you know, toot my own. I'm like, I should have my own rugby podcast. <laughs> you got one. Mate. I've got one. I was like uh, Matt Ferguson, one of the most underrated players in the Scotland squad. Yeah. I said he's a potential line. <laughs> Yeah, go it's going the right way. Clip it? that in. Uh, top tackler, most successful tackle so far in this Six Nations. People are talking up Matt Ferguson, like, "Oh, where's Matt Ferguson come from?" Matt Ferguson has been good for Scotland mm -hmm. for a couple of years. He's young AF. Yeah, like that's really shocking, isn't it? I think he's mid twenties. Uh, I think he's 23, 24. 23. I mean, like that is mind blowing. Yeah, Xander as well. Like the two, the pair of them are. Yeah, far beyond the years, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. To be a prop sure. and to be that good when he's that age. Like. For sure. And, uh, you know, another interesting stat, um, to considering how much of an impact Duhan has had mm -hmm. in the Six Nations, and I heard this, but we're now seeing it on the screen, the fact that Hugo Keenan uh, has done... Uh, has made the most metres, 291, mm -hmm. and Duhan has made 253 in second... How good is Hugo Keenan? <laughs> I mean, like, you've obviously got those cheap yards that are made being a fullback. It's quite. Funny, I, I do get that. So the guy's yeah. absolutely terrible. Do have oh. most of his are sideways. So. <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot must, of this must mean meters forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he gets the old negative meters a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. Hugo Keenan's a joke. Like so good. Yeah, seemingly out of nowhere as well. But I'm like, yeah, he's a ridiculous asset. Um, the going back to the Matt Ferguson thing as well. When you look at that dynamic, I heard him on a podcast talking about how much he's enjoying playing with uh, Luke Crosby and with Jamie Ritchie. And you look at the dynamic of those three pe those three guys. Yeah. Like, a, three years ago, you probably wouldn't have paid any of them. With yeah. the likes of Hamish Watson in there. Yeah. I guess, like, I don't know how far back going, like Barkley. These yeah. guys who were, you know, stalwarts. Uh, then there was the whole rotation of uh, Billy Thompson... Uh, yeah. Obviously not playing anymore, yeah. and um, a whole bunch of it. Yeah, I can't think of the top of my head. But um, yeah, Magnus Bradbury, he was Magnus like, Bradbury, yeah, good example. Lots. But the three of them now feel quite comfortable, certainly in this campaign, and they're really young. 
So I'm like, it's quite exciting. I d- yeah. D- obviously, after the weekend just passed with that um, with Edinburgh, I, d- I can't see Watson coming in this weekend. But um, yeah, I think the three of them feel quite comfortable and certainly are, are obviously playing well off each other. For sure, we're obviously recording this on the Tuesday, um, so the team probably released we think on the Thursday. But I, I agree. I think that back row has got to stay the same. I think the second row is again Grant Gilchrist and Richard Gray have just performed Richard absolutely. Gray. So good. Richard Gray, <laughs> guys, absolutely like rolled back the years. Um, <laughs> ten years it's ago, actually, man, te- the Lions tour to Australia. Yeah, was ten years ago. And that's, you know, Richard also, Gray went on that tour. When uh, Johnny Gray, obviously, is still maybe just recovering from injury and will come back. Yeah. But he was the messiah who, who mm. put Richie Gray back into the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Richie, like, the second coming. It's the unbelievable. Coming Richie Gray. And then, obviously, the front row, I think, has performed really, really well. So, a huge positive for us has been the physicality that the Scottish pack has brought and the success it's had in the first two games. I think that's carried on mm. from Edinburgh in particular, obviously, their performances against Saracens. Almost that belief that we can physically dominate. Yeah. The only thing... Pure Schumann. And Pierre Schumann. Too as well. good. Too the, good. The only thing is... The France and Ireland packs are enormous, mm-hmm. and I think. But they, their biggest, the f- I think the biggest French threat. I can't remember who it is, but apparently he's out. Yeah, he's banned. Oh, he's, he's banned. Absolutely yeah. giant lad. Who is that? Yeah, he's enormous. Um, uh, yeah, I forgot what he's called. Uh, I, yeah, I do think that plays a factor, but I think from a Scotland point of view there'll be confidence we can cope physically with everyone. Yeah. I think our bench has performed so well. Um, over the last two games as well. If you think maybe Hamish Watson can be creeping onto that bench, incredible strength to be bringing that. You know, yep. I just think we can compete. This weekend is obviously a do or die for France. Like if they lose this game, they can't win the championship. Yeah. Um, if you lo- if you if you consider the WP now is in form, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Then you could have a bench of Hamish Watson, Lyon, Chris Harris, Lyon, Xander Fakeson, Lyon, Roy Sutherland, Lyon. Yeah, not, not to be sniffed at. Not to be sniffed at. <laughs> Which is all. actually mind blowing to think. I, I mean, we've gone from, you know, growing up in a period where there was no no Scottish lines so at, at times, and we to, to be in a position where they're all on the bench is so shite. <laughs> and we scored more games against more tries against. Wales than we used to score in full Six Nations, so Sorry. incredible! Big shout out to Carl Stain as well. You know, Darcy oh, yeah. Graham missing him is enormous, um, but Carl Stain's just performed so well as well. I, it's amazing how well players are stepping up, mm. and I think credit to Gregor, Gregor, credit to Finn. It's yeah. like the vibes within that squad and the togetherness that they seem to have when they're on the pitch. I think huge credit to Jamie Ritchie as well. He seems like a very, very good captain and leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, They just, it just seems like a massive corner has been turned since the November tests or Greg's been, uh, Finn's been left out on form. You know, you think that was only four months ago. Mm -hmm. And now it is so positive. Yeah. Well, so uh, Ferguson again on the, on the pod I listened to, he was just talking about the level of um, intensity at training. And like it's the best environment for training he's ever been in, and I think you know that can be the difference. You can imagine in a place where you're constantly in the headlines, Gregor talking about not talking about Finn Russell, but being questioned about Finn Russell. Yeah, the amount of distraction that brings a camp. Like yeah. even if they're trying to focus on the game, of course, um, you can't. You couldn't in that period of the autumn nations look at your phone without there being someone saying something about mismanagement, misman management. I think um, clearly, you know, they have managed to resolve that and it is showing. And I think probably Finn Russell does bring a lot of that clout to the, the, um, the, the, the uh, practice. I, yeah. I just get the feeling that you need your, your uh, senior leaders, of which he is, has yeah. become very quickly. Um, over the course of the last five years, uh, to be happy and, and performing well. And I think uh, it makes such a difference. A hundred percent. I actually have some probably a little bit of goss around that whole situation. And I was speaking to someone who used to work at the SRU. And um, they were saying the way Gregor handled that 
was unbelievable yeah, in the sense positive. that um, Hogg, Finn, a lot of these players have stepped out of line in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, in particular, last Six Nations when obviously they all went mm-hmm. out on the sky. And Gregor has been trying his hardest to wear a lot of that. Yeah. When in reality, players have been stepping quite significantly out mm-hmm. of line. And then obviously Gregor's taking all the flack that he doesn't let the boys have beers mm-hmm. and that you know he's far it's far too controlling an environment. And he is wearing that. He is like, yeah. I will take the blame and I will make the calls. Yeah. Um and I think he deserves a lot of credit. hundred percent. For the fact that I think a lot of players in that squad know Finn is one of the best players in the world, mm-hmm. know they need him, mm-hmm. but at the same time are like, we all need to get our head down and work. Yeah. But it's really hard for them to be able to say to Finn, like, Finn, come on, let's fucking all pull together in the same direction. So to have gone he through all that, to do that now, you can see they, they beat England and they all respond in a completely transformative way. Yeah. By, you know, straight away they're on to the next thing. And obviously, um, yeah, there's been a lot of growing up and a lot of maturity that is now presented itself as a result of going through all that kind of Definitely. chaos with, with Finn. Oh. But I, cr- I agree, like, Gregor has taken the most flack of any Scotland coach ever, probably, yeah. off the result so much of that. Um, and he, he presumably, although uh, whether or not he ever saw his relationship being repaired or not, uh, obviously we only know so much, but... Um, if he was thinking forward and he had expected this to be the outcome eventually, then fair play to him because yeah. <laughs> it's gone in exactly the right right way. Well, Which, I think, again, that's where probably it's on uh, Finn as well. Like, There's credit to Finn that he's a strong enough character and mm-hmm. strong, confident enough in his own ability that, you know, the guy can... I can do whatever he wants. He'd take a year <laughs> off and hold it, and I bet he'd come back and and still play a good game. You know, he, it's funny. he even talks now about how tired he was that year. So maybe the guy he went on the Lions, yeah. you know, tour. The guy had a busy couple of years. You remember the Lions tour as well? He he started well, didn't start. Came on mm. quickly in the last test. Played very very well. It's like Finn has been under a lot of pressure. Is under pressure at Racing mm. to deliver titles to de- deliver yeah. a champions cup victories all that kind of stuff the and now he's he moving country <laughs> like, well, he literally like, carries the weight of every team he goes to on his shoulders yeah and i, I imagine that's yeah, incredibly that's... challenging but at the same time it doesn't mean he's above the team and i think this scotland team has found a way to have him clicking and yeah. playing so well and focusing so yeah. i heard obviously post england game they didn't sky yeah, you know, I think they had probably a couple of beers on their way back up, but they flew back up. I think that night, um, three years ago, guys would have been out till <laughs> <on> fucking <laughs> Tuesday morning. Um, yeah, that's mind-blowing. On the drill, you'd have Greg with his tie around his head, ripping <laughs> shirt buttons open. So I, I think times have definitely changed. Yeah, um, I'm sure against Wales, they probably had a couple of beers because they had the the week off, um, and then hopefully against France again. If they if they put in a good performance, I think couple of beers then on to the next one because obviously the next game post france is ireland so one and two, if, two and well, one in the world next incredible. week if we're if we've been in france and we're back on what are we doing we Short are selling so many grand slam coffee beans <laughs> like, if we've beaten france we're and we're recording this next next week or the week after how much are you getting butterflies thinking about it grand slam coffee you can buy it karen gorm um, free coffee for everyone it's not free it's 13 pounds a bag <laughs> it's going to become a collector's item we've obviously got people coming into the cafe now hope is building yeah and our grand slam coffee tastes like hope it certainly does yeah so we'll probably <laughs> leave you with that no yeah absolutely um, well, do we need to talk about who we think is going to play or does it really matter i, I tr- doesn't matter it doesn't really matter <laughs> i think the team will roughly stay the same yeah and we don't know. Like this will be released. The team will come out and we'll look like idiots. So. Yeah, I mean Hugh and Sione. You can't like as for right now is the, I, the dream partnership. I think we would say we would do hand staying great. Yeah. yeah. So. The only question for me would be around Hog and whether I think he'll still start. Um, he's he's fit to start. Is he? Yeah, uh, yeah I believe so. Yeah, it was a HIA, but I assume yeah, he'll be fit to start. I agree. With that, Ten days off. I think it's it's a confidence thing for the whole team. Him being. 
in that pocket at a busy away game. I'm like, I don't know how we've drifted into this right at the end as we're trying to wrap up. But again, it's like Jack Dempsey obviously has been playing well for oh. Glasgow. So, yeah. what do you do, with Hamish Walton? Who didn't play very well <laughs> for Edinburgh? He was ca- he captained as well. Whether or not that hampered his performance, I don't know. I like again if you're not changing the back three, um, you know, do you have Watson or do you have Dempsey on the bench? And I think Dempsey is is the better performer right now. I mean, he scored at the weekend. Yeah, I think Dempsey's and Dempsey's looked good when he came on. Obviously, he had that honking pass against England, but um, and he's, that wasn't really as well. I think so. W- Watson obviously has. Uh, a long, a lot of credit in the bank for being a real combative. You know, the pinball he can he can bounce off tackles, but a Dempsey is a little bit more gritty against a, a French pack. I think I feel like he's a bit more route one, and I think you know that's yeah that's only a good thing. So I find that so funny that it's like uh, how have Scotland ended up in a situation where you're fuck, casting aside a Lions <laughs> player, a guy who. Has been so good for the last four or five years because they're like, nah, we've got this other guy who's actually 100% Australian. But I guess that's where a Gregor Townsend is, is not afraid to make those decisions, oh, which yeah. is, you know, the right decisions potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we've not dipped into at all as well, which has been quite a lot, obviously. As Scotland do better, everyone is like, South Africa A, South Africa B. So annoying. And South Africa C. Yeah, I do find that. Hilarious, and yeah. it's great. But it, it's funny, we've got a long tradition of using foreign players. So we yeah. had the Kilted Kiwi, Brandon Laney, who I watched a video about over the weekend, and actually, yeah. having thought he was shite my whole life, I was like, oh, he actually was great. Uh, um, like, yeah, in recent years, you had uh, an American on one wing and uh, an Australian on the other wing, like Maitland and, and Seymour. Dutch, and Dutch guy as well. <laughs> and Fisher, yeah. Basically, when we were shite... Nobody cared about all our foreign imports. And now they're like, oh, you're, you're good. We care about your foreign imports. And yeah. I think part of that is it, do people wish that they had imported Duhan and Shu? Because I'm like, Ali Price is English. Ben, why is English? Uh, Hugh Jones, obviously, was born in Scotland. Sione Tapota, Tui Tapota. Has a, like, has a um, granny Scotch from granny. Paisley or something. Yeah. <laughs> I just think. Yeah. Scotland, our issue is obviously we only have two pro teams. There's only so much money. Yes, less players are being developed through the Scottish system than there was previously. That's great. It's saving us heaps of cash. <laughs> if if we can get people into our I, team who are roughly yeah. Scottish, um, does but do that. It's like just, Haggis. it's not... People might argue that we're extorting the system more than others, but we're everyone not. is doing it. <laughs> so it's like... Mac Hansen. Yeah. James Lowe. <laughs> yeah. Josh Hander Flair. Yeah. Oh, no, he is. This is this is a common misconception. Supposedly, he's massively... He is Irish. What? I, got, I heard his dad get interviewed. Uh, Josh Hander Flair cannot be Irish. Um, you look it up, just to make what, so I don't look like a complete idiot, but... What was, uh, what was their number eight called as well? Yeah. Um, uh, he moved <sighs> back to South Africa. Uh, yes. What is his name? If Josh Van de Fleer is Irish, I will be. Is an Irish or Yeah, born in Wicklow, Ireland. <laughs> Isn't that mind blowing? It's got like the most Dutch sound or South African sound. He's of Dutch descent. Yeah. Very interesting. Sorry, I take that back. They yeah, moved to Ireland in the 1950s. Yeah, I find that funny. But it's I think that's a common point. misconception. In fact, they were talking about it before the game. I really take that back because he's actually fantastic. Yeah, he's unreal. So the fact that he's fully come through their system is. And unsurprising, to be fair, their system's so oh, good. so so such a good system, to be fair. Um, yeah, I, I I think Scotland are going to take a lot of flack for that. The, if we win the Six Nations, uh, yeah, people will say, "Oh, it's, there might be an asterisk against it." I am, I could surely not give a hoot. Yeah, whether ninety percent of our team was not developed in Scotland. Um, yeah, I think it's about. Uh, Tua Tapata gave a great interview on that that uh, he feels like he is representing his mm. Scottish grandmother when he plays for Scotland and I think that's the most important thing for me is to compete at the highest level of international rugby you need the best players yeah. and not all of those players are going to be developed in Scotland Yeah, we don't have enough we don't have a you know, a 12 team premiership 
where everyone's going bust anyway, so mm-hmm. that's working out great for England. Their team's shy anyway, so they're their whole what, thing shy. What matters to me more than the fact they were they were born in Scotland, or even if they're not from Scottish descent, is that they have pride in playing for the Scottish team. And you know, watching Duhan's interview before the game, when I watched that back, yeah. was she crying? Yeah, because he's so he, he values so highly what Scotland have done for his career. He was an injured outcast when he yeah. joined Edinburgh. Yeah. Scotland have made him into what he is, essentially. Yeah. He obviously had natural, um, he I means a specimen of a human being, but Scotland have done a lot to harness his um, his performance and, and, and I, have I, made him into, yeah. I think that's such an important point that probably people um, underestimate and by bagging on these players, the work these guys have put in to become, you know, two of the best players in the Six Nations, if we're talking about Shui and um, and Duhan so far in the Six Nations, the work they have to put in to achieve that is incredible. So to to then obviously absolutely hang them by it's like oh you're South African, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like it does matter because yeah. they're they're performing at the very highest level. It probably the most competitive international rugby tournament. Week in, week out, yep. and tearing it up. So they deserve pants on backs. <laughs> Massively. Not baggings. Pure yeah. Schumann's obviously sat in this chair doing a podcast himself. Yeah, so you're in good company. We'll maybe get him back on. Maybe we'll get, get, him, we'll back get on. him on this one. So we were wrapping up, I think 10 minutes ago, we were yeah. wrapping up, and now we've got Easy done. Tangent. So just quickly before we do oh. before we wrap up, score prediction. Uh, you really. So tough. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Um, I think, again, quite high scoring because France are creative. They can unlock Ds, but our Ds very good. So I think they'll score in the 20s, so I'm going to say 24, and which means Scotland needs to score more if I think we're going to win, which in my heart mm-hmm. and head, I do not think we will. Oh! Okay. So yeah. I'm going to say 24 to France, 20 to Scotland. <laughs> And I hope you're going to say that they're going to win. Yeah, because I just think that um, you're you're not. Yeah, you shouldn't be allowed to say that. I'm not trying to sell enough around some. Do you not get enough reward for <laughs> for uh, getting it right? For getting it right. <laughs> uh, so in that case, I'm going to say 36 to Scotland, 31 to France. <laughs> I think it's going to be absolute chaos. I do think it will be ridiculous. Why is you look at the like? This is Ireland against France, two greats of the international uh, scene. But Scotland are about as dynamic an attack as as it comes. France also, they're, they're you know the likes of Peno, uh, Entomax ability to unlock defense. I'm like. It's going to be incredible. You're expecting I fireworks. Be, I'm expecting fireworks. <laughs> I think that is... Uh, Romaine uh, candles. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Romaine intimate. Uh, um, just in case, uh, just in case there are any casual, non rugby People are not familiar with France. Um, yeah. I think that's a ballsy prediction, and I hope it comes true. Uh, yep. The Grand Slam will. is still on. Yep. And now. if you are right, it will still be on. Yep. The next time yep. we talk. So let's hope. Everyone, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, for a great weekend. I'm nervous. Another I'm one. I'm nervous. I, can, I actually can't wait as well. So Sunday afternoons are shafting. I want to. Not, not as good on the old beers, but no. Um, enjoy it wherever you're watching it, and let's hope for another Scotland win. Eh? Scotland. <laughs>